Hi, and welcome to the Colorado Connection podcast, where we talk about Colorado, what to do in it, and interview some amazing people along the way. With your host, Jalen McKenna, Colorado's Mortgage Dad. Uh, thank you for joining us today again. My name is Jalen McKenna, Colorado's Mortgage Dad. This is Colorado and Connection. And today joining me, I have a man that I have been wanting to interview and talk with going on, I think, four or five months now. And our our uh, uh, schedules finally synced up. So we're taking advantage of it to record this. I have Nabil, a.k.a. Newton Khatib. Uh, I'm going to... Re- refer to you as Newton through this entire time because I it's a strong, powerful name and I absolutely love it. So I'm just going to go with that. Um, so Newton, um, tell us a little bit about you and uh, we'll get into your story because it's a really interesting one. Well, thank you so much, John. I appreciate the time that you're taking to interview me. Well, uh, as John mentioned, we've been trying to do this forever. And finally, we are on. Um, Well, I go by Newton. Original name is Nabil Khatib. I am a professor at the University of Colorado Denver and Metro State University. I'm also a practical bridge engineer. I am also a big fan of tutoring. So I love tutoring and I help people with classes. And I'm trying to make it short introducing about myself. I don't want to go with all details. Hopefully at some point I'll bring things up. <laughs> we'll try to get it. We'll, we'll fit it in there. <laughs> Perfect. And you'll well, make sure that my voice is good and my volume is good. Yep. Perfect. Yep. Perfect. Okay. So Newton, yeah. How about you tell us about, uh, you have a very interesting story of how you came to America. I think it's the perfect, um, it, it's effectively the epitome of the American success story. Um, so kind of let's go into that. So, yeah, I came here about nine years ago and I did not literally you know how to speak English. It was zero English um, knowledge for me. So I came here, and funny story that my dad told me, "Hey, you want to go to a center to learn English?" And I said, "No, because they're gonna teach you he is, I am, and not gonna speak like that." So I'm a very amiable person, you know, kind of gregarious, like to be on my own and explore the the people and especially in Colorado they're really friendly and you can talk to people and super easy going so obviously it was very tough to speak in English and understand also the accent so it was very very <laughs> challenging <laughs> so um, started with with my undergrad right away uh, as a civil engineering student and you know really did not want to do civil engineering because I love math I still love math. I was like, you know what? I want to do math. But dad was like, why not like killing two birds in one stone? Do engineering and math. I was like, well, sure. Let's try that. Yeah. And, you know, I did finish my, and Jalen, please stop me if I'm like going, you know, forward. Okay. So I, I did, you know, finish my undergrad (laughs) in three and a half years. I did not fall in love with the civil engineering until the course of concrete, which basically the senior you know level or senior uh, year, I just like, well, this is really cool. Now I see what the civil engineering or structural engineering does, because I all you know just the, the statics, the mechanics, and those who are engineers, they know this is very dry courses, and you really don't see the the aspect or the texture of engineering. So when I started doing the concrete, I was like. Hmm, this is really fun and cool. And then I, you know, received a scholarship from Dr. Kim. Told me, do you want to join me as one of the graduate students? And I said, why not? Let me do that. And then I start actually before that, start doing some of like teacher assistant and, you know, helping people, tutoring, very minor here and there on the side, side gig. Not really, you know, it was not something that, spent more than half an hour to one hour a day because it's just 
not my thing. What is tutoring for Newton? It's nothing, you know, I've, I've never done tutoring before that time. I was like, well, let me focus on my uh, graduate, you know, uh, studies and get it done and finish and continue to get a PhD and be a professor. And that was my goal. Never thought about doing like practical bridge engineering or structural or even civil. Because I was like, I'm very passionate about teaching. I like to help people. I like to do, you know, just kind of simplify the big concept to simple concepts. So I was, you know, I, I was admitted in the, in the master program, finished my master in 11 years, 11, 11 months only, 11 years, that would be a lot, <laughs> 11 months only. It was very stressful because I had to take classes, do my thesis and get it done in only 11 months. So it was very hectic. And then I was like, you know what? I get also scholarship for my PhD. So I was like, well, do I really want to continue doing the PhD or should I stop and do work as a civil, structural, whatever it may be? Naturally, the course that I was taking before graduating from my master's, it was highway bridge design. And Professor Lee was really a great influencer. So he helped me like, why just learn these concepts? Why not put them you know, in real life. Like, you, you do all the math. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, it does, but does that make sense on the real, you know, life, or like the practical life? So I was like, you know what? I wanna do a work as a bridge engineer or as a structural engineer. So I'm gonna stop here, because I feel like I told the, a lot of things and you want to like catch up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that you, uh, you, it, it's, it's about your story. And so, um, some questions that I had coming up while you were explaining that. So, uh, what country first did you originate, uh, originally come from? So I grew up in Amman in Jordan. So back in the middle East is a very small country about, I would say right now 11 million population okay. you know uh, yep. that was, and um you know it's it's just uh, um you know for me jordan was everything and i when i before i came here i was like no i don't want to come to the u.s even though i'm a dual citizen you know i was like dad you want to go to the u.s and i said no i was like who said no to the u.s I'm like me because I have my friends and my buddies and you know I live here and I'm happy. So, but it was a great move from dad and I really appreciate him so much. And obviously, you know, he sees something that I do not see. Yeah, and how was that coming coming here and, and leaving you know friends, family behind? Uh, oh. How did you cope with that? And and you know how, how did you overcome that huge obstacle that I can imagine anyone even thinking about leaving their friends and family behind going to a country that they do not speak the native language in. Um, those are a lot of hurdles that people do. Uh, so clearly you have to have that drive and termination. And I think everyone can hear that from you, but, <laughs> but how was that, uh, coping and, and kind of, what did you learn from that experience? Well, to be honest, uh, the hardest part was the language and the kind of like the stereotype and the culture. So everyone that I know, typically right from left to right, back in Jordan, Arabic goes you know the opposite way. So right to left, and imagine this big obstacle that's the first obstacle when you read something and you start from left and you want to go to the right no 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 that's not the way it goes in Arabic so you have to go backward so that's something that obviously killed me when I was like learning you know the language and the second thing that you know like a, a silly example you know back in Jordan you know you can't touch people especially men to men fine when I came here and I want to like touch someone I was like what are you doing, sir? So yeah. It was yep. very, you know, different. That's yeah, Coloradans so are friendly, but not that friendly. But not that friendly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, and, and plus, you know, when you go and ask, you know, in, in Jordan, you're like, not a lot of people use GPS. So when you go and ask someone, hey, like, 
I'm looking for this so and so. Here in the, in the U.S. or Colorado, Denver, you know, I was like, even they're so super friendly, but when you ask these questions, like, what are you trying to do? Like, just iPhone and smartphones and smart technologies, or just you know, Google that. So that you know, and then especially for me, you know, like I came here when I was um, 19. Yeah, I was about to be 19, and you know, not a lot of exposure back in Jordan to technology because number one, I'm still like what, like high schooler-ish, you know, and my family is very conservative and they don't want like to, you know expose us to every technology because that damaged a lot of families now. So when I came here, I was like, well, I, I do have an iPhone, but I really do not use it that way. And now I do not even probably ask anyone to go anywhere because just like that's the way it goes. Like you want to even ask about like, a, a, I don't know, medicine or something. I was like, oh, let's Google advantage pros and cons, right? So then you just adopt just to that, you know, sort of atmosphere if that makes sense yeah, yeah. no absolutely and, and and so 19 too what, what's the uh i know the u.s has one of the oldest drinking ages so i mean you couldn't even really go out and meet people in that kind of way whereas again if you're in europe or something they have those lower drinking ages so you at least have a way to find your social um group so how is that finding your new social group here in in america that's a great question john i actually have it on my list so good job doing that um well two things and you're going to be surprised from the, the actually the two of them the first one matt Imagine math. Yeah, exactly. That's your fate. Like, what the heck? <laughs> so the math, the math helps me a lot communicate with people. I'll tell you a funny story. You know, people come to me and, you know, one of my professors, David Franzen, he, you know, came into the class and said, hey, guys, I'm just going to, you know, introduce myself, he introduced himself. And then he asked, you know, just simple questions to me. What is root two, root three? And a lot of people do not know this because rely on the calculator, right? Yeah. So I, he said root two, and I said 1.41. Then he said root three, I said 1.72. And he looked at me, I was like, you probably not from here, right? I was like, yeah. Because nobody remembers what is root two and root three and root five, you know, these things. So I, you know, people like, look, was looking at me, I was like, this, you know, alien is coming from mars or something right so they start to come to me and talk because if he knows what is root two he probably knows you know knows more stuff so start coming to me and ask me and i i remember you know talking math only so i was like telling a lady katie i was like i only know this nothing else so it was very interesting that people talking to me and try to you know kind of like let's go hang out let's do something i was like well um, i don't know what are you guys talking about <laughs> it was really funny <laughs> that's the first thing the second one or the second kind of like two that i used light rail it did it did not really work very well because people are <laughs> sometimes weird on the light rail or they think that you're weird it did work out for Probably a couple of months, you know, try to communicate with people and chat, especially urgently, which I really adore talking to, to them. Um, they're very friendly and they're like talking and you're like, they're a very slow talker as well. So you understand what they're talking about, you know, as if you're going to someone from, you know, the Tennessee or <laughs> Southern accent when you speak to that, you know, person. I was like, uh, do you speak English or what? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, so so the the best advice you can give to someone learning uh, English and practicing it is uh, find some elderly people without an accent and go and just chat them up. Yep, exactly. To be All honest, right. I mean, you want to be very. Um, I know that not a lot of people can do it. You can't. You know, not everyone can be gregarious. 
you can be friendly and amiable and just go and talk to people. But if you, I get this from the Middle Eastern people all the time, you know, how the hell do you speak like this right now? And I still think that I don't speak perfect, you know? And I, I and I'm not, I will never ever speak perfect because I don't think it's my language. Number two, I don't think I do a lot with English, even though that I, you know, recently was involved in a, in a book that I'm going to be talking about later, you know. So um, still, like, you have to be, you know, going to people and not ask them to talk to you. If you're walking in the neighbor, especially if you have a neighbor, nice neighborhood, and you're walking, try to, you know, be polite, number one, and try to make sure that you approach people because people might not approach you, but if you approach them quietly, nicely, I think you can break the ice, and from there, you can, like, just go, if that makes sense. Yep. hundred percent. Again, it's it's one of those things that is a little bit or can be harder for some people that are those more introverted, but um, mm -hmm. to your point, yeah, just going and talking with more people um, and just kind of putting yourself out there really is the best way to kind of um, advance whatever skill you're doing. Put yourself in that uncomfortable zone. Exactly. You know, like think about it from a math perspective. Like if you are afraid of math and you don't do math, you will never be good at math. Similar language is is kind of math. You want to know the rules. You want to know the the kind of like the 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 format of how things go and so on and so forth. So you can adopt yourself. Say okay, this is the math that I know, but it's pretty similar. Similar analogy. Yep. Right. Yep. Hundred percent. So, um, on that note too, why did, so back to coming to America, you have basically all of the world that you can go to, you choose America. Great. There, I think a lot of people understand the, um, you know, the benefits of coming to America. Uh, but what drew you to Colorado specifically? Yeah, that's a great question. Look at you. Are you looking at my thing here? <laughs> <laughs> what's going on, Dylan? So um, I'm a pro. I don't know. I don't know what to <laughs> what to tell you. <laughs> so Denver or Colorado specifically, because actually, Dad. So Dad came here back into 1976. So he came here to to visit, or actually from uh, my uncle. So my uncle came here before Dad. And, you know, kind of like ask dad, do I like come to the U.S. to, you know, kind of join me or, you know, be uh, brothers here? Because, you know, obviously the U.S. is the dream of everyone um, till this point, obviously. But, you know, a lot of people think that, well, I want to go to the U.S. And they do not know that you have to work hard in order to, especially in Denver with the inflation happening. And I don't want to go to politics, obviously. That's not my field, but you know, you have to work your butt off in order to live, you know, nicely and having what you what the basic plus maybe it depends on what, what is your goal and what what you're thinking of, you know, in the future. So dad came here in back in the nineteen seventy six and you know, we kinda like after him came every, you know, one in the family, you know, except very few. Some people chose to kind of like draw their own plan and go to a different country or chose to stay in the, in, you know, the original country, Jordan. So that's, that's kind of like the, the brief summary of the story, if that makes sense. No, hundred percent. It, it's a, uh, yeah. Family has been a, a big part of it so far. So let's jump right into um, what your family is before we talk about the amazing work that you're doing. So um, I know that you're a dad as well. How is dad life treating you and uh, married for how long with a follow-up of how did you meet her? <laughs> well, <laughs> So I'm not, just a correction, I'm not a dad yet. Oh. I'm expecting a baby, actually. That's next correct. Month. So uh, my beautiful wife, Manal, she's due in, you know, 
April 23rd, and I have to remember the date exactly, and I even count the weeks, but otherwise I'm going to get in trouble, right? So. That's right. That's right. So, we've been married for almost um, exactly October 7th, 2020, so about a year plus. Um, and I, you know, as I, you know, said, expecting a baby girl, we're going to actually name her Talon. And actually, if you see my, you know, bracelet, it says Talon. And there, you know, one says my, you know, wife. So <laughs> that's, you know, I, I, I know you need to be a very good husband and follow all the rules, you know, good, you know, wife, good, you know, wife. <laughs> and happy yep. life, happy Right. Yep. Yep. That you can. There's. There's plenty of people that don't follow those rules, and uh, uh, right? boy, do they! (laughs) And and trouble looks different from from wife to wife. It's it's a different kind of trouble. So it is trouble. Like you're gonna get in trouble. So no matter what level of you know difficulty or troubleability. (laughs) <laughs> That's a word. <laughs> so how did you how did you meet the wife? So we we got to have the story, and you you can't. I mean, I guess if the story is math, then we have an underlying uh, uh, commonality that is uh, throughout this entire story. Uh, come to America, math math leads to wife, math leads to baby. It's all adding up at this point. And surprisingly. Agile and that when I decided to go with the legend, you know, it was kind of similar, kind of era or similar sort of period of wife came here. Because it was, you know, I met my wife back in Amman, Jordan. You know, um, I actually saw her and I, you know, just sort of, it's, it's not a really traditional marriage. It's more of like we start talking for months. But after I saw her and, you know, I was like, you know what? It looks pretty. Let's, you know, go talk to her. And then we start talking, you know. And after that, you know, things really, you know, the chemistry was pretty good. And I start doing the paperwork for her, for her. And, you know, she came here back, you know, in October 2020 you know, 2021. And I was told by some of the clients that we're going to be talking about, like the, the story of the legend, to open something on my own. So it was very, you know, close to, you know, the period that she came here. And I was like, hmm, huh, looks like, you know, now she's bringing good stuff to, the, to, to my life. So as I told you, if be a good listener, things will go well. <laughs> yep yep that's the yeah they, they uh if you actually listen to your spouse too they generally they'll, they'll drop a little bits of wisdom every now and then if you actually tune in every once in a while <laughs> no I, I always say you know you know women always right especially your wife is always right so always throw all the wisdom on you Yep, whether you want it or not. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right, so let's jump right into it. Perfect segue. So, tutoring. How did you get started doing tutoring? We already kind of heard that uh, you made a lot of friends through education, math specifically, because you understood it. Um, and so, clearly, that your understanding must have translated into some ability to teach it in in whatever form that was initially. So what made you kind of have that click moment of, hey, I'm I'm gonna do this more regularly and um, ultimately have a career out of it. So just a quick question for you. Are you looking at my sheet right here? <laughs> or are you pro or what, what, what's going on? Uh, I'm, uh, uh, yeah, I, I just know the questions that, that people want to have answers to. That's... <laughs> So, another really interesting story. And to be honest, I was not thinking about tutoring for one second. I was in a, one of the lobby in the Tivoli, you know, building, you know, in Sioux Denver, University of Colorado Denver. 
Yep. And I was eating Subway. In the basement. In the basement. Yeah. yeah. Anyone that's ever been there, it's, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) The food court's in the basement at that particular building. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. The the bottom floor. And I was eating, you know, Subway. And I was, you know, just thinking about what I want to do and just like brain parts. So, I, you know, there is a guy who came to me and asked me, like, do you know anyone who help with math? We're on campus, so we're expecting these questions, right? So obviously, my English was very, very bad at that time. And I said, can I help? You know, surprisingly, he's from Saudi Arabia. So he speaks Arabic form. Then I started to explain to him things in English. His English was way better than me but he did not understand me. So he said, where are you from? I said, Jordan. And he said, wow, I'm from Saudi. And I said, do you speak Arabic? And he said, yeah. So I started explaining to him math in Arabic. I gave him exchange number. He started coming to me for free, regularly. Just, you know, for fun. He was a very nice person, Abdullah. His name is Abdullah. And he said, you know what? I'm going to tell people that you do tutoring. I thought that he's, you know, making fun of me. So I said, Abdul, are you serious? And he said, yeah. Two days later, I'm expecting a call from a guy. Hey, are you doing, you know, math tutoring? I said, uh, I don't know. I can help, but I'm not sure about tutoring. It is not, I don't know what does tutoring mean at that time. What is tutor? You know, I know teaching, but I don't know tutoring. The word for me, tutor, back in Jordan, we ne- I've never seen it before. So I came here, I was like, do you do tutor? And I was like, what is tutoring? <laughs> you know? So he came to me at that you know point. I was like, what is your rate? And I was like, I don't know. I was like, what are we talking about? And I'm like, in my brain, I was like, well, I charge 15 bucks an hour. So I thought it's like a big, you know, a lot of dollars. So <laughs> I said, 15 bucks an hour. And he looked at me, I was like, oh, that's great. Let's do that then. So he loved it. Seems like he had a tutor and charged him more than that. So start coming and people talking about me. I was like, there's a guy that we know he does help with math and so on and so forth. So started then and things gradually and actually rapidly became something, part of my life, actually, part of my daily, you know, routine. Yeah, so so you fall into this. Um, when did you decide, hey, I'm going to make a career out of this? Because doing it on in in for for a part time job in college, we all have our part time college jobs, and then having a full blown career from something definitely a different level of commitment there. <laughs> And so you didn't even know the word when you first started, and now it's a career. So what was that step? When was that eureka moment? To be honest, that came when I started getting a lot of clients. I remember one semester I had 17 um, credits. I was about to graduate from my undergrad, and I had close to 22 clients. Imagine 17 credits, 22 clients, and at least see me once a week. And are you doing anything to to get more business at this point? Or is it just all natural, all natural? Uh, Word of mouth. It's pretty much, you know, especially in Middle East, if you, it is like sort of something that we always say, if you are known in something, you don't have to spend any penny because people come into you without even doing anything. And that what happened to me and actually still happening to me to this point, even though with all the advertising that we do on Google or YouTube or LinkedIn or whatever, maybe still word of mouth. I get people saying, Hey, Newton, I was like, I got your number from so-and-so. I was like, Whoa, this guy is like probably last time I heard of his name five years ago or something like literally. <laughs> 
So it started when I like getting more people. I was like, you know what? I'm getting like 20, 20 plus, you know, clients. And I'm like charging more now. Why not making this as a full-time job at least, or not a full-time job, probably like part slash full till I get a really, you know, professional job. And I never, ever thought it's going to be that way until this point I was talking to Manel and I said, you know what, what I see with the whole legend and I'm getting more than 100 Google reviews, perfect, five out of five in only one year and we're gonna obviously talk about that later. I was like, this seems to me that I'm still dreaming. Like literally, I was like, tutoring is something that I never know what does it mean to become part of my daily routine and have tutors work with me. I don't like to use four because it's definitely not me. It's just, you know, unpredictable. It's just like insanely good. So when you first started going full time with this, did you work with someone else? Did you just start opening your own company right at the gate? What did no, that actually, look like? No, actually, I did not work for anyone at that point, And I started just doing my, my thingy. But then later, you know, I'm, you know, my, my clients are not there anymore because some of them graduated and word of mouth is great, but at some point it's not gonna go and last forever. So I had to say, well, I do tutoring and a lot of people looking for you know, tutors, but I can't reach those people. What shall I do? One of my friends you know, said, he like threw this on me and said, why not work for a company for tutoring? It's part-time. You do your master and just do this you know, on, on the side. I actually worked for a company and worked for almost two years for the company and I worked for another company, another company, another company. I, you know, at some point I worked for almost together six companies. Because independent contractors, so you don't have to worry about like, they will tell you, you could work for this company and any other companies. So I like, you know what, this company is getting a lot of, you know, clients on math, but this company is getting a lot of clients on civil. This company is getting a lot of clients on this. So let me get those clients, or sorry, this get, you know, to those clients through the company, not, you know, advertise for myself. Yep. Then boom, things happen with the legend of like never, thought that it would be a legend for a tutor and even the the weird name is is, is kind of weird because who's the legend i'm still 20 you know seven years that doesn't make a lot of sense <laughs> you know <laughs> so uh, you i don't know, know. there's a there's a lot of people that are they're younger historically and they've done bigger and greater things so i think that your name is just a being added to that list um so <laughs> what i what I need to know is, um, when was that light bulb moment? What, what, yeah, where, legend, where, legend for tutoring? yep. When legend yep. for tutoring that, just came up. That actually came from one of my clients, the okay. Hayward family. And I'll show you a picture here in a second of the family on Google. Actually, if you just, you know, I'll share my screen in a second. And I was tutoring their daughter and then she told me, Nicole, she said, it doesn't make any sense. What is your rate? Be honest with me. And I said, 20 bucks, sometimes 22. She said, you are, you're worth more than this. What are you talking about? And I said, what do you mean, Nicole? Be genuine with me, just throw it on me, you know? And she said, well, you should open your company, a website, start with a website. I said, what, a company, me, website? Ooh, what are you talking about? It doesn't make a lot of sense because it's, it's commitment, right? And I'm now, you know, I, I work for a consultant company as a bridge engineer and I work for the university as a, you know, affiliate professor. So there's a lot of things on my plate and I just got married. So you don't want to, you know, kind of like file all these up on your desk and then at the end of the day you're crushed and you don't have family time and that, that's definitely not me so I said well let's try I have a small budget 
talk to friends. I have zero business background, so I can't run that business. I can do the tutoring only. So let me ask people to help me. That was actually last year, end of last year, start thinking of, and we officially opened the company almost exactly a year. So we opened you know, the company in March of 2021. And you know, since then, I said, I do not regret it a bit, you know, any penny of this. So um, I hope that, that answered your question. I think so. I think so. And, and, and when starting this, um, what did you have as kind of a vision for the company, um, a vision for like what your kind of goals were? Are there any goals associated with like a short term versus long term planning for this? Uh, give us a little bit of taste of where it was at, where you are right now and the plans moving forward. Yeah. So the vision, I don't, you know, at, at that point, I did not know what is vision and mission. I was like, well, I'm like, I'm a tutor. Like I've never opened something on my own, but with the help of, you know, the partners that I have, Jessica, Megan and Mohammed, you know, I definitely appreciate them a lot, you know, and, you know, they, they start helping me establishing what do you, what do you, what is exactly your vision? Tell us like, just, you know, informally, what do you want people to have? I said, I want to help people with less cost I want to help people with their career. I want to help people be very close to them. I just don't want to act like a tutor. I want to act like a friend, someone to you know rely on me, not only with things that they need in their school, but maybe later help them get a job if I can, help them motivate them. And actually it comes to a motivation that recently I'm being involved in the Eagle Crust and Cherry Creek do paid motivation speaking. I'm not Denzel Washington yet, but hopefully one day. <laughs> so, and then, you know, obviously I did not have tutors. I was the only tutor, and I did not want to open any kind of like new department. I want to focus on math, things that I can do, and stuff that I can help with, and that's it. But then things along the way, I start looking for tutors for me. Tutors for lectures, tutors for English, tutors for science, chemistry, physics. And now we're expanding to have pretty much K through 12 and beyond college and professional. Now we're okay. actually open the professional engineering, you know, department where I, you know, lead the structural department and some other, you know, Brad and other people. They help with the water resource. Uh, Doctor Sala, he helps with the transportation, you know, and um. What is her name? Sorry, I forgot the name. Uh, Corny, she's helping us. Sorry, Corny. <laughs> My apologies, but you know, I'm not good with names. So, Corny, she's helping with, you know, the, the construction. So, we're opening all these things. So, pretty much, if you come to us, you know, five years old, and you, you know, all the way to your high school, and then after that, you go to college, and you, even if you're doing engineering, we can't take care of you. Nice. So you're and you're uh, more people reviewed and adding yeah. more people to the mix. At, you know, having clients from all over the places. Trust me, I have people from the Arabian Gulf, Middle East, Canada, Europe, China, India, pretty much. You know, all over the places. You know. Yeah, South you're America. global. Yeah, a little bit like like literally like you know I started with only two clients. You know. And the two clients pretty much from the Hibbert family, the son and the daughter. And now we're sitting, you know, close to a hundred clients with more than a hundred Google reviews, having more than 60 plus, you know, person, um, yep. you know, work for the company or work with, with me and helping me. And I, I, you know, I want to say to them, thank you from my bottom of my heart, because this can't be done without, you know, Oh, that's the uh, that's when you know uh, there's a good culture when the the man when the man at the top um, very graciously just uh, shouts out to all of the people that have helped him get there. So yeah. I'm sure they definitely and to be honest, appreciate John, this that. This cannot be done without them, and I'm being very honest. You know, I yep. can't do anything without my people. Thank you, my people. I appreciate you guys. 
Perfect. So anything else that I didn't cover that you want people to know about Legend for Tutoring? Well, I do want to know, and if you don't mind me, Jalen, here to share my screen quickly yeah. here. Some stuff. So here's the website, and we, as the Legend for Tutoring, and everyone in the family of Legend for Tutoring, we give, obviously, our clients and tutors free shirt. This is some, that's our slogan, or that's our, you know, shirt with the logo on it. We teach yep. with passion and love. And, you know, this also, if you want to see more pictures of our clients, you know, these are the people that we help on daily basis, whether current or previous, you know, uh, clients. And we have more, but we don't want to, this is the Hayward family, actually. We appreciate you guys so much. Um, and, you know, so this is, you know, what we do. And we also, I also want to share with you the kind of the overall view of the website. Here is the website and legend for tutoring denver.com. It doesn't serve only Denver, but it's Denver because the, you know, my, my idea was that it was based in Denver. So add in the Denver to the website. Yeah. I would like to yep. thank Fatty Yusuf, you know, for designing um, and printing our shirts. I also want to ask the people to, if you would like to have a quick, you know, um, checkup on the Google reviews that we have, you know, all the people that, you know, Google us. And you could actually look at this interesting Google, Google review because I recently or we recently publish a book. So if you go to the website okay. again and the product, I was heavily involved in this practice exam called the Civil FE Practice Exam. It contains more than a, or actually 100 you know, questions or problems step by step detailed, covers all these topics. And one really fun thing that I, you know, want to mention is um, I was, you know, very grateful and thankful to be nominated to one of the best CEO in the state of Colorado under Colorado Titan Hunter. So you could check that out. Um, and I also I'm very grateful and thankful that I will be on Fox News 31 in the very near future to talk about small businesses in Denver metro area. And I want to thank again my people. This can't be done without you guys. Um, people who work for the legend, you know, they know how agile, you know, the price is very, you know, um, reasonable. You know, uh, we are, we communicate with our clients, you know, on a daily basis, offline and online. That what makes it actually us unique. So a lot of people are asking me, why Legend for Tutoring? And first thing that I say, we care about you as we care about our, you know, people. You know, you go and, you know, check out the Google reviews that we're not only just gonna drain your money and just say, yep, you're, you give us, you pay the invoice, see you later, that's not us. So we follow up with you and we want to hear from you and how we can help you, and obviously, you know, to reach your goals and ultimate goals, whether professional or your school, or maybe, you know, even motivations. You know, I've been involved in that. As I mentioned, people come to me and say, you know, my daughter, she doesn't like to study. What can I do for you? I was, you know, <laughs> I, I literally, I did that, like sending her Amazon gift card. If she does good in the test, why not encourage her, right? Yeah, a little bribery, a little uh, exactly. greasing some palms with, uh, exactly. with a little bit of moolah never hurts, especially yeah. with uh, the younger generation. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can you can get dang near anything on Amazon too. That's a ticket to the world. Mm -hmm. um, well, perfect. I think that's a perfect point to um, wrap up with. But uh, anyone that's interested in getting a hold of you, um, learning more about Legend for Tutoring, 
where's the best place for them to reach out to you. Um, and everything that he says will be and is linked just below this video. So anything that Newton's about to say, you can find it right there to make it super easy for you. No reason not to reach out. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dylan. So you could obviously, you know, reach out to me directly at my cell phone number, 720-238-3026. You could reach out. The best way I would say is to go to the website, legendfortutoringdenver.com. There is an inquiry form. You could fill it out, but please do not be afraid to reach out directly because I do care about the people that I'm going to be working with or potentially work with them. So just that's me. I'm very, you know, helpful when I help people. I help them to the max. I don't just like, you know, just drip here and there. That's not. <laughs> no, that's perfect. That's perfect. You're you're living up to the name of the podcast, Colorado Connection. You make that connection with your clients. So, um, Newton, I appreciate your time today. This was great. I I already knew your story. I knew it was one worth sharing. So thank you for now sharing it. And uh, we were finally able to get this whole shebang uh, <laughs> recorded and done after four plus months of, of uh, one schedule and a, a company or two. And <laughs> <laughs> well, so thank you, you. Dylan, so much. Um, fun fact about me, I always call the hard stuff fun. And people always like kind of like, like, what, what are you talking about? What is this fun thing? Because it's so hard. I was like, let's have fun. I was like, oh, that means hard stuff. <laughs> I appreciate you, Jalen, so much. Thank you again for having me. Um, and, you know, just speechless to be with you and very grateful. And, you know, you name it, whatever. I'm speechless. <laughs> well, there we go. Thanks again. And uh, you and I will talk again soon. Anyone that's looking to get a hold of Newton, you now know how to do so. Check the links below and you'll be able to get easy access to him. He's He put his phone number out there. I mean, if it can't get much easier than that, but mm -hmm. easiest way, go check out his email. See exactly, or yeah, his uh, website. Go see exactly what he's doing, how he can help you. And, uh, and or anyone that you know that is uh, of school age. There's never too young uh, to start it tutoring make sure that you learn the right way and uh it, that's all i have to say so all right i'll see you next time newton see ya bye-bye hey thanks for joining us today if you wanted to follow up with me or any of my guests or if you want to check out any of the information that i or any of my guests had talked about today then check out the links below otherwise please rate share and subscribe wherever you saw or listened to this Thanks again and see you next episode.